All footage of Kazdan Paratus is taken from Antoine Bandelay's Let's Play of Star Wars The Force Unleashed 1, and all footage of Maw is taken from Lightning Bolt Forever's Let's Play of Dark Forces Jedi Knight. Both are recommended viewing. One of the hurdles I had to overcome in making this video was the difficulty in determining Maw's precise skill level. All we know for certain about him is that he's a fully trained Jedi Knight, a hardened Jedi killer, and has been honing his skills for decades. There's no information on his previous Jedi kills, and he wasn't able to demonstrate anything against Jedi Master Ku Ron because he was cut down so swiftly. And the official version of his fight with Kyle Katarn depicted Katarn defeating him by goading him into recklessly charging, a purely circumstantial victory and not a demonstration of combat skill from either combatant. I opted to sidestep the issue, and I will be proceeding under the assumption that Paratus and Maw are equally skilled, and my arguments will be focused purely on the logistical factors. I will be using the boss fights with each character from their respective video games as the basis for my analyses of their fighting style, battlefield conduct, and tactics. With all of that out of the way, let's begin. Kazdan Paratus and Maw the bastard love child of Yoda and Dr. Octopus versus the amazing flying torso. If these two unhinged abominations ever met on the battlefield, who would win? Kazdan Paratus was an Alina male of unspecified age, though as a Jedi Knight during the Clone Wars, he was likely in his early to mid-40s by the time of his death shortly before the Battle of Yavin. Alina are distinguished by their small size, exceptional dexterity, and their accelerated metabolisms. The dexterity fed into Paratus' role as a tech specialist, but the accelerated metabolism was ultimately his undoing. As a result of this trait, Alina respond poorly to prolonged stressful periods, which left him on edge for the entirety of the Clone Wars and led to his psychological breakdown when Order 66 was issued. The initial phase of his insanity was an inferiority complex focused on his small size, which drove him to attach four prosthetic spider arms to his back. These limbs granted Paratus exceptional reach and mobility, allowing him to cling to any surface and walk on walls, and enabling him to wield a lightsaber pike. A meter and a half long shaft of lightsaber resistant Frike alloy with a shortened blue lightsaber blade on one end. Lightsaber pikes provided exceptional reach and greater surface area for parrying. I believe that, like Yoda and Su Choi, Kazan Paratus originally carried a Shoto short lightsaber and converted the weapon into a pike after going into exile on Raxus Prime. As detailed on his character sheet in the Force Unleashed campaign guide, Paratus was a Xi'en specialist. The classical variant of the Perseverance form, Xi'en was designed mainly for blast deflection, though as has been demonstrated by the likes of Anakin Skywalker, it could be employed to great effect in a lightsaber duel. Paratus held to the typical Form 5 operating procedure of defending first and immediately countering. His style's defensive component capitalized on the greater surface area of the lightsaber pike, twirling the shaft in front of him to deflect attacks. His offensive component capitalized on his superior reach and mobility, pairing off rapid sweeping slashes with flanking sidesteps and acrobatic rotations to generate momentum. He favored hit-and-run attack patterns and made good use of the terrain, the Force Unleashed novelization describing him as hopping around like a demented jumping spider and clinging to every available surface. Good integration of telekinesis, favoring force pushes in close combat and force throws at a distance. One of his primary tactics was to retreat to a secure position and from there unleash a dedicated ranged assault with his force abilities. In this stance, Paratus employed what was arguably his most formidable power. As a Jedi tech specialist, he displayed a clear mastery of the obscure power Mekuduru, 
which allowed him to perceive the complex structure of droids and machinery, combining this power with telekinesis to assemble heavy assault droids on the fly. This unusual manifestation of the Force was clearly brought forth by his insanity, and was only possible on his home turf, the junk Jedi Temple he constructed on Raxus Prime, as nowhere else did he have access to the necessary components, but this was still a highly impressive display of power. After concluding his Force Power Assault, Paradis typically re-entered the battle by flinging himself into the center of the arena and unleashing a Force Wave. Kazdan Paradis's powers and tactics generally revolved around his psychotic need to control his environment, maintaining the fantasy he built for himself and destroying anything that threatened it. Ma was a Boltrunian male, well over 70 years old. A dedicated bodybuilder, he drew heavily on the dark side to maintain his strength and vigor well into old age. He was most notable for having survived by section, cut in half at the waist by Jedi Master Ku Ron. Ma took the loss of his legs in stride, initially relying on a repulsor lift carriage for mobility, but later developed an instinctive mastery of force flight levitating about with the ease with which others walked. Equipped with an orange-bladed standard lightsaber, Ma revised his fighting style to take advantage of his unlimited mobility, studying and mastering Tripsest, the dedicated flying lightsaber combat form developed by the Dark Jedi Karis. His strength-oriented blade work suggested a previous specialization in Gem So, the dueling-centric arm of the Perseverance form. Though he adapted his overall style and approach to take full advantage of his newfound mobility, he retained the strength-oriented blade work, favoring sweeping slashes and hacking cleaves, backed up by solid two-handed blocks. However, though his lightsaber defense was capable, he developed a preference for dodges and evasions in order to capitalize on his freedom of travel. He backed this up with a strong unarmed component, favoring full-body tackles and body slams. He boasted a solid integration of force-based telekinetic strikes, mainly force grip and force throw. As a tactician, Ma was an ambush predator who favored hit-and-run attack patterns, hurling himself at his opponent like a cannonball and darting out of range before they could retaliate. He backed this up with a skillful use of the terrain and chose his battlefields well. The prime example of this was his confrontation with Kyle Katarn, which took place on the Rusan docking array. The narrow catwalks and sheer drops of the umbilical restricted Katarn's mobility, while Ma was able to fly around him and attack with relative impunity. Ma operated almost purely as a lightsaber duelist, using his force abilities strictly for tactical support. His primary power was Consume Essence, a dark side ability that allowed him to feed off of the anger and fear of his opponents. He reinforced this ability with psychological warfare, provoking these very emotions in his adversaries. Ma was a cunning and experienced warrior who knew how to use his attributes and his environment to blindside, undermine, and ultimately overpower his opponents. Though he was sometimes given to recklessness and bloodthirst, and hadn't yet ironed out all the wrinkles in his fighting style, he was still an incredibly vicious and threatening airborne adversary. Given that Galen Merrick was able to overpower Kazdan Paradis in a blade lock, Ma clearly possessed a strength advantage. The problem is that he wasn't able to leverage this because of forced flight. Pressing against the opponent in a lock would merely cause him to drift away because he has no way of bracing himself. His muscle mass and the momentum he can generate by charging means he can still strike with great force, but this is countered by Paradis' use of deflection parries. Regarding Ma's ability to defend against Paradis, his two-handed blocks would be effective against the Mad Jedi's individual strikes, but I don't see him keeping up with Paradis' rapid-fire attack sequences. Paradis has been training with his weapon and appendages for upwards of a decade, capitalizing on them very effectively. 
where Ma has the habits of a lifetime to overcome, and is still adjusting the force flight. The occasional corkscrew maneuver aside, Ma was very linear, simply advancing and retreating, where Paratus made better use of flanking maneuvers. Paratus' better use of his mobility and weapon grants him a substantial advantage over Ma in close combat, a pure lightsaber duel between the two having strong parallels to the fight between Oberyn Martell and Gregor Clegane in Season 4 of Game of Thrones. And this advantage carries over to Force abilities. While Ma does make proactive use of the Force, his application is straightforward and relatively infrequent due to his emphasis on lightsaber combat, where Paratus incorporates these methods into his method much more fully. The strong telekinetic defenses that Paratus displayed against Merrick are an effective foil for Ma's use of force chokes, and Paratus has been observed catching and deflecting thrown objects. Ma is credited with moderate force defenses, but I think Paratus' telekinesis would still be effective for off-balancing him. Ma could definitely use Consume Essence to feed off of Paratus' insanity, but this boost doesn't amount to much because Ma fails to use his powers effectively. He's a subversive Force user, not an overwhelming one, and that's simply not enough against a dervish like Kazdan Paratus. Ma's problem is this. What he is trying to do is completely at odds with what he has been for most of his life. Prior to his dismemberment, he was clearly a rock-solid power duelist in the mold of Warb Null or Darth Malgus. But now he's trying to shift gears and become a more speed-based fighter like Yoda, and the result is a bizarre combination of elements that make him very unpredictable, but are at complete cross-purposes with each other. Kazdan Paratus, on the other hand, has a much more established methodology all of his skills and attributes adding up to something greater than the sum of their parts. He has specific tricks for specific situations, but is so quick on the draw with them that, in practice, he is a very erratic adversary. The only situation where I could see Maw claiming victory would be a confrontation in a confined space, where Paratus wouldn't be able to make effective use of either pike or appendage, and Ma's smaller size and more linear approach would be an asset. Otherwise, I declare Kazdan Paratus the victor.